Right now, hundreds of migrants are lining the border near San Isidro. I'm glad you're with us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Irampar. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So this is happening ahead of Title 42, which is set to expire here on May 11th. A lot of people are gathering at our border. You see the countdown right here. In just over seven days, Title 42 will end. And ahead of that, hundreds have now gathered just south of San Isidro. And that's where CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is joining us live now with the very latest and the plans by the Biden administration. What's going on there, Dana Marie? Well, good morning, Eric Gannetta. I can tell you the Title 42 for reference is a coronavirus public health order that pretty much turned away all asylum seekers at the border. But with that soon ending, so many of them are now here. A lot of them exhausted, malnourished, fleeing violence and looking for some protection. Um, in terms of what the United States and Mexico are announcing right now, a couple of things. They do plan, the United States plans to welcome 100,000 migrants into the United States, but they're also looking to address the humanitarian situation to counter human smugglers and traffickers that are exploiting migrants. Now, the Biden administration announced it will set up migrant processing centers in Latin America, increase deportations, and expand legal migration pathways in a bid to reduce the number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border unlawfully. Now, to deter unlawful crossings after Title 42's end, the Biden administration has been working to finalize a rule that would disqualify migrants from asylum if they enter the country illegally. Now, in an attempt to stem the influx of migrants to the Mexico border, migrant processing centers are being set up in Guatemala and Colombia to screen migrants to determine if they qualify for different options to enter the U.S. legally. That includes traditional refugee settlements, family visa programs, a sponsorship initiative for certain countries, and also temporary work visas. And right now, an additional 1,500 National Guard troops are being sent to the border to help out with border protection. That's for the next 90 days. So, of course, they're really expecting a lot more um, intervention in terms of making sure the people that are trying to come here for asylum um, have legal ways to do so. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from San Isidro. A lot of changes coming to our border soon. Dana Marie, thank you for that update. This morning, eight children and a security guard are dead after a school shooting. This happened in Serbia. We just learned the teen suspect had a list of targets. It happened overnight in Belgrade at an elementary school. Another six children and a teacher were hurt. A 14-year-old boy accused of opening fire at that school is now in custody. And investigators say he used his father's gun. New video this morning shows police arresting the man accused of shooting and killing five of his neighbors in Texas. Francisco Oropesa was captured last night after a five day long manhunt after police say he shot neighbors who asked him to stop firing his gun. Police say they found him about 17 miles from the crime scene. He was hiding in a closet underneath laundry. This just into our newsroom here. MTS says normal bus service is operating here this morning. Last night they warned there could be service disruptions today for the South Bay and mini bus services due to a work stoppage. But again, they just tweeted out here. There are no disruptions. Well, voters will have their say on who replaces County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher following accusations of sexual misconduct. The board is moving forward with a special election. It is set for August 15th. It could cost close to $5 million. So who are the candidates? Well, San Diego City Council member Monica Montgomery Stepp has officially announced a campaign. So has veterans advocate Janessa Goldbeck. And Amy Riker, the co-founder of a group who pushed to reopen schools and businesses during the pandem pandemic, is also running. She also ran against Fletcher in the last election. I like these videos. It's one of the most recognized donut shops in Los Angeles and has been featured in several mus movies and, of course, these music videos. We are talking about Randy's Donuts, you know, known for that giant donut you see off the 405 if you're going through L.A. They just opened their San Diego location a few minutes ago, in fact, 6 a.m., and we saw earlier CBS 8's Chris Grow was there live at the new shop off Murphy Canyon. So many people were waiting, Chris. So did they finally get to go in? 
Meta, they are inside and they are waiting. And here's the thing. First, people that show up today before noon, they're going to get a free glazed donut. Then the other thing is the first several folks that are going to be walking in, they're going to be entered in for a raffle to win free donuts for a year. But the first 50 get the coffee mug, right? The first 50 who know the secret code word. know the secret code word, which we are not going to give out, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And then, of course, you've got the iconic Randy sign, which, Spider-Man, you can't eat the sign. Iron Man has to sit in the sign spider-man what are you doing all right we'll let you we'll let you web sling all right buddy <laughs> but uh yeah it's a lot of funny these are the first several customers that have come inside and I, you know guys I, I i don't think it would be a good visit unless i didn't grab uh let's grab let's grab a glazed donut Please, thank you so much for visiting us all right no problem man let's do it so we're gonna try out the glazed donut we're gonna see here what randy's is all about up from la down here in san diego in padres land and uh when are you guys going to be doing a special Padres donut, do you know? Working on it. Working on it. I like to hear that. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much man. All right. So we're going to go ahead and give this a try, guys. We're going to go ahead and put this in and, uh, you know, hard work here on the morning show. Oh, yeah. Where have I seen this before? Chris sampling Chris something delicious wow, nice. and tempting us. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. That, Chris that, eating, Chris tempting. That is as fresh as it gets there, buddy. Job. Now, Chris, remind us, our That's viewers work. that are watching, how early were people lined up out there? 1.30. Wow. 1.30 to be first in line. There's someone in this town that got yeah. up before yeah. us. Wow. wow. And the, the younger boy and in look the Spider-Man costume was up early. Yeah. And look at, yeah, well, and look at these folks who were here maybe 3, 4, 5 a.m. Yeah. Yep. They're just now getting their donuts three, two hours later. Wow. <laughs> line wraps around the whole building, guys. Worth the wait, Incredible. though, right, for the novelty of saying, yeah. I was the first in line. Taking a picture by that big donut. But, Chris, you weren't waiting at 1.30 in the morning. You got you cut. Yeah, you cut line, man. It's all in the name of journalism. <laughs> <laughs> well, VIP access. Got to bring reporter. us that hard-hitting report. <laughs> okay. Yes, with the soft you, donut to, as right. the reward. Thank you for that, Chris. Appreciate it. Soft and glazed. Yeah. That looks oh, tasty. Gooey and gooey and Good to see you sugary. and all those people out there. They had their jackets and blankets <laughs> waiting outside. Yeah, it's been cold this morning, a little misty out there. But, hey, five hours in the running, and now they got their donuts on hand. Uh, it's a cloudy start to our Wednesday morning, halfway through the week now. And, uh, those dense clouds that are hanging off the Pacific are starting to break apart the farther east you go. Already from our Mount Soledad camera, which I'm looking at off uh, toward the right here, we've got some broken cloud cover. Here's what the forecast holds for the day today. Slightly warmer temperatures than what we saw yesterday. Mid 60s is what we're hoping for from the coast through your inland valleys. About 61 to 64 is the general consensus for pretty much every coastal and inland community. Uh, we'll start to see that gradual climb in temperatures closer to the weekend, but for today, Day through about Friday, we're still going to hold on to those cooler than normal temperatures by a pretty decent margin by about 10 degrees cooler than normal. Mountains are going to be in the low 50s this afternoon. The breeze continues over the deserts. Deserts have been struggling through three days straight of strong wind gusts, 40, 50 miles per hour. So today will be another day. And then tomorrow, those showers start to become a little bit more intense. So we start to see activity really ramp up. What we see on satellite radar is mainly dry conditions, a few showers just offshore. All of this is really going to accelerate as that chance of showers climbs to about 70%. We have the possibility of some thunderstorms, especially up toward North County. That's where the majority of that wet weather is going to be taking place. But even toward the South Bay, we're still looking at the chance of about a quarter of an inch for tomorrow morning. Most of that is going to be during the morning commute time. So keep that in mind. Here are your forecast models. We'll run them through about 930 PM tomorrow. And you can see how while they do disagree at times, most do show about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Some favor the coastal communities up toward North County, Oceanside, Carlsbad, for example, uh, and then give the South Bay a little bit less, uh, about maybe a third of an inch. So all in all, this is going to be a day today of partly cloudy skies, a light breeze, cooler than normal temperatures, and then tomorrow is the day of rain. Friday, we'll have a few showers lingering through the early morning hours, and then we're back to gradual warming, gradual clearing as we go into the weekend. Now time for traffic. Let's take a look at your border wait times. It's 610 on the clock right now. And according to the CBP website, the wait time right now in the general line at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, 130 minutes slower uh, than what we see at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. Otay Mesa, it'll take you about 85 minutes, so hour 25 or so as you uh, head across the border. Back to you.